Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Back. Good Running Tuesday up. morning. Welcome Running to Run It Back. back. Yeah, yeah. This is FanDuel TV. Uh, we are coming to you from all of our different homes representing the United States of America. Sean Sharania in Chicago. Chandler P. out in L.A. Lou, are you in Atlanta? I'm in a part of Atlanta, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a part of it, Atlanta. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even want to ask. And I'm coming to you from New York City. We got some basketball to talk about, a lot of basketball to talk about. Remember the times when we talked about the Clippers and would this work and what's it going to look like? Well, it's working. Uh, they defeat the Pacers 151 to 127. Eight straight for them. James Harden, season high, 35 points, 21 of those coming in the fourth. Seems like he's doing all right. Benedict Mathurin with a career high 34. Look, Harden's averaging 20 on 11 shots and almost 10 assists during this eight game uh, winning streak. I know there was so much speculation. We were part of that, but are you surprised at all how quickly he's been able to sort of just fit in and make this thing go? Uh, I'm not at all. And this is a team that we said, listen, once they started getting on these win streaks, once they even won two or three in a row, how quickly we forget their struggles in the beginning. And when they got three guys like this and a fourth guy and Russell Westbrook, who, by the way, his minutes have gone down and he's still the happiest guy on the bench, which is a huge <laughs> sign for this team. But when you got James Harden putting up these type of numbers and, and he's going, you know, 12 of 15 from the field, eight of 11 from the, from the three and turning the ball over one time, this is a dangerous, dangerous team. And when you, they have a little bit of everything, they still have the two or the better defending wings and PG and Kawhi. They got one of the deeper teams. They got a solid big that crashes the glass. I mean, this team literally has it all. So when they're all clicking on all cylinders, it's an it's a nightmare of a matchup, especially for a team like Indiana that just tries to outscore you and outplay you. This was a tough matchup for them, but the Clippers got it going. And this is what makes them so dangerous, because when you have this amount of talent in the postseason, it's going to be tough to beat this team four times when they're all clicking like this. Yeah, and we got we got to change course, Chandler. This team is armed and dangerous. They figured it out. And I think I think one of the key opponents is Terrence Mann is back. He's a glue guy. He's one of those guys that give them balance. He's going out there. He doesn't care who scores the basketball. He's going to play defense. He's going to make open shots. He's going to slash. He's going to give them a lot of different opportunities to score the basketball in ways that the big four usually wouldn't. And so that's made them a deep basketball team since he's been back from injury. And, and listen, like you said, give James James Harden credit. He's playing well, but I feel like the best player on that team is still Paul George. Paul is the most comfortable in his skin for that group, and they figured it out. Can we talk about the Snow Angels for one quick second? Like, I just want to figure out what I'm looking at or how this works or what I think. <laughs> Let's, oh, yay, we. You know what this you know what this is see, when I see, the holiday when I see spirit. things yeah when I see things like this this is more important to me than the stat sheet this is more important they're having fun and they look comfortable and they're enjoying themselves again and I'll give them credit James he never snapped at the media when they were poo-pooing on him for this fight for losing his first five games he stuck with they, it they hold, hold on hold on they were poo-pooing on him you know, we listen, were poo-pooing on <laughs> everybody is not going to work but we also you can pull the clips we definitely also were saying listen give it time the minute they win one two three in a row it's all just going to be a memory of, of of their struggles and this is what i'm talking about this the russell westbrook celebrating praising getting up off the bench this is huge for them. To me, that is the biggest sign that they are happy it's working and winning solves everything and they're currently on a, on an eight game win streak they're also and, and it's okay sweats. for us to it's okay yeah. for us to change our opinions, right? So this team is yeah. healthy. All four of their star players are playing the game. I got this team winning the West now. Woo! Oh, hold up. I, well, I was gonna I was gonna ask you, are they contenders? But we're going all the way. Okay. Really? Absolutely. If they remain healthy, you got this is the deepest team in basketball. And so they figured it out. They've turned the corner. They got four guys that they can literally give the basketball to and say, go win us a basketball game. Russell Westbrook has accepted the fact that he's going to come off the bench. James Harden is looking like James Harden. Kawhi Leonard, he's not tripping. He hadn't said anything. He's playing his position. Paul George hadn't said anything. I feel like Paul George, out of the four guys, he's benefited the most from having that depth, and he's playing the best out of the four guys consistently. This is a deep basketball team, and they're figuring it out.
Yeah, I mean, 1,000%. Again, we talked about this yesterday. You look at the Western Conference. In a series, I, I can't take Dallas. I can't take OKC. I can't take Minnesota over this team. No chance. Just the experience, the guys that they have on their team, they are going to be so comfortable come postseason that it's hard to overlook these guys. And again, I'll take it a step further. I like the Suns still. I think that eventually they're going to get to where this where the Clippers are now. It's not healthy. That's the problem, though. That's the yeah, that's my only problem with the Suns. One day, this is all going to be a memory too that Bradley Beal has been out. <laughs> they're unhealthy, and their big three is better than the Clippers' big three. So when they get to this level, well, the Clippers got a big eating, four. They got a four. They got a four. four. They got a deeper. They got a four. They got a deeper bench. I will say the de- the depth the depth is unbelievable. Can you imagine if Boston or teams like that had this bench and this luxury of ha- being able to go 9, 10, 11 deep like the Clippers can? They got guys like P.J. Tucker that are so valuable that are just begging not to playing. play. Yeah, right. Pissed off they can't play. So this team, the, the depth is unbelievable. But like we said yesterday, too, the, the, the rotation is shortened in the playoffs, but injuries happen, right? They're part of the game, and it sucks. This team has guys to just fill in, or got, you know, assuming that someone goes down, someone's banged up, someone gets suspended, something, the Clippers are in the best shape come postseason to kind of use that depth to their advantage. And you know one other thing that we said, Chandler, at the beginning of the season that we can run back to tape? There are six or seven teams in the West. There are six or seven teams in the East that at any moment they can give you a really, really big problem. And so we're tuning up for some really good basketball. The Clippers are figuring it out. They're must-see TV. As much credit as we gave to Indiana, they made them look crazy last night. And they just went to Indiana and beat the hell out of them guys. And they made them look regular again. And so I'm excited to see what the future holds for just some good basketball. Yeah, well, we'll get to the Pacers, too, in a second, because they, they've got some things they're dealing with as well, Shams. But as far as adjustments go, Ty Lu, I mean, he's had his share of, of sort of dramatic situations handed to him. What has he done here? He's had to have a lot of tough conversations, tough decisions on, on the rotation, especially. And Chandler Lou touched on it a, a lot. But you talk about Russell Westbrook. His minutes, this this eight-game winning streak, he's averaging 17 minutes a game, nine points a game. He, he's, he's had great splits, 52% from, from the field, 36% from three. He's drawn four charges in this eight-game winning streak. He's kind of playing this spark plug role that we haven't seen from him really in the past, like fully embrace. And, and his minutes... For the rest of the season, it's going to be in that 15 to 20 minute range. And that's something that he's embraced for now, as long as they're winning. But you think about it, Ty Lue has replaced P.J. Tucker, you know, almost entirely from the rotation. He's not even playing last night, blowout win in, in Indiana, and he doesn't even get off the bench. Kobe Brown playing a lot. Amir Coffey now back in the rotation. So to me, it's the fact that T. Lou, this is what he called the toughest coaching job of his career. And he's embraced it and he's had to have a lot of managing conversations, managing egos, uh, guys like Russell Westbrook, P.J. Tucker, veteran players that feel like they can play anywhere. And shout out to Russell Westbrook. He's fully embraced that role. And I've been to a couple of Clippers games over the last couple of weeks. He can change a tenor of a game, especially in the fourth quarter. If he comes in, plays the right way, and, and, and has that spark plug mentality, he's been a force for them off the bench. Hey, toughest, toughest coaching job. Why don't you head over to Detroit and take that job, see how tough that is. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm not rolling. I'm not rolling with that. He's got the deepest, one of the better teams in the league. I, I understand he's got to manage egos and substitutions and hurt some feelings, but give me that job any day of the week. <laughs> I feel like that would be the good one to have. Um, can yeah. we talk Tyrese Halliburton for a second? Because the you know the world is now very aware of who Tyrese Halliburton is. Everybody is very aware. He's got double teams left and right. He's going to have to figure this out, right, Chandler? Like, what adjustments can he make moving forward? Well, I think it's collectively on their team. It's on the coaching staff. It's on Rick Carlisle. He even said last night that they have a target on their back from what they did in the in-season tournament. And, and there's this, this is something that they're going to have to get used to. And the scouting report is to make anybody besides Tyrese Halliburton beat you. So they're blitzing him in pick and rolls. They're trying to speed him up. I think he can do a better job of hoisting these long Steph Curry, Trey Young type threes that are low percentage. Um, sometimes he he rushes and he tries to beat the double team, but 
this is a this is an adjustment that they're going to have to make, right? They they go into these games and they just try and outscore every single team. And when you run into a juggernaut like the Clippers last night, where they're all efficient and they're clicking, it's going to end badly for them because they can't defend and they don't defend. But listen, Tyrese, he, he's he's now a household name. He is going to get guarded and prepared for like a superstar in this league because he is becoming one. So they just got to alter their offense a little bit. He's got to get off the ball quicker. He's got to try and beat these blitzes and pick and rolls, split pick and rolls, and continue to do what he's what he's doing. He's going to have off nights. He's going to feel pressure to do more because he is the main guy on this team. And for them to win, he does have to have these huge games. But he's got to just continue to take care of the ball and, and, and just – be used to these doubles and triple teams because it's going to happen for the rest of the season. And we, and we talked about the, the end season tournament and the rest of the guys in the league, the fear of missing out everybody the the Indiana Pacers, they put the entire league on notice. And so guys are sitting at home and they're watching that and they want to be the guys to rain on the Indiana Pacers parade. Right. And so one thing that we should notice, this is the first time they've played at home since the end season tournament. They've oh. been on the road this entire they've been on the road this entire time. And that's tough coming out of coming out of something so emotional. You feeling like you're doing the right things, but on the flip side of that coin, Tyrese he said, "This is my time." And so with that comes responsibility, and he's going to get the best shot from every single team in the league. Guards that want to guard, they're going to try to shut him down. Teams that want to beat them, they're going to try to put them in their place, and they're dealing with some of that. So those are growing pains for a young basketball team who's trying to get over the hump and be respected. It's a good problem to have. It's good to be respected. Um, Knicks. Absolutely. Knicks go into Los Angeles, beat the Lakers. Oh, on this night of all nights, how dare you? Jalen Brunson, 29 points. Julius Randle with 27-14. AD and LeBron as well, 32 and 25, respectively. Um, the Knicks right now, Chandler, fifth in the East. Brunson, Randle doing their thing. Do you think maybe we trade for someone? We make a move here to go all in? What are we thinking for the Knicks? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes trade Tony. everybody, trade everybody not named Jalen Brunson. <laughs> yeah. Which, which, by the way, I don't know if you guys saw that video of his pops trading him outside. It was one of the <laughs> yeah. best videos. I love that. I, I love that video. Oh my God, it makes me can't wait till my son gets older. But the, listen, the, it's tough when you're the Knicks, right? Because they play, they play hard, they defend, they have this three that's that's not really elite. And someone said it the other day. They said they never have the best player on the floor on any night, which is true. They as good as Jalen Brown is, as good as Julius Randle. I disagree. Is, they oh, don't have not. that guy. They don't have that go-to guy. They don't have that household name. So, yeah, I do think if you could package an R.J. Barrett, you can go and get a disgruntled Donovan Mitchell or one of these other guys that can kind of push them over the edge. Because right now they're, they're just fighting for a playoff seed. We all know that they're, they're going to get to the playoffs and they're going to lose to either Boston, Milwaukee, or Philly. I think they're peaked right now, but they do have assets. They do have piece, pieces on that bench that are valuable that they can kind of collectively go and get a star player to then make that jump. But right now I just think they're kind of stuck in the middle somewhere. Chandler, there's no better player on Orlando magic than Jalen Brunson. There's Ooh. no better player on, there's no play, better player on, on the Memphis Grizzlies until John Morant comes back than Jalen Brunson. Oh, he's back tonight. Tonight. He's baby. back. Yeah. He's he's back tonight. There, there's no better player on the Detroit Pistons that's better than Jalen oh. Brunson. So look at I the teams you're issue. naming, Lou. Look at the teams yeah, the you're naming at the bottom of the barrel. Besides bottom the of the barrel, yeah, bottom, bottom of the barrel, and bottom of the barrel. And Kenny Smith said that on any given night they never have the best player. That was a little that that was a little different. But what what I will say is they have a consistency problem. You know, they very talented players very young, talented players, but consistently, I don't know if I can trust this basketball team, and that's their issue. But they do have talent, and they do have guys that can go out and win you a basketball game uh, and are considered all-star caliber guys. Julius Randle has has been named to an all-star team. Jalen Brunson is on a bubble to be a perennial all-star. So they have talented players. The problem is they don't do it consistently, and that's the issue with the New York Knicks for me. And other team, these other teams, they have big threes, right? This team, this that's not a big three. It's three, it's three solid players, right? But I wouldn't look at them and compare them with these other like big threes across the league. So again, I, I love Jalen Brunson. He's one of my 
favorite players in the league. I just, they need more. And if I'm the GM or if I'm running that team and I can go make a splash and get one of those perennial all-star type players that can go on. Yeah, you do it. 40, believe me. Without a doubt. Everybody's, everybody's touching besides Jalen. Without a doubt. I don't, listen, I, don't, I don't trust them. I don't, I don't, I don't trust the Knicks because they're up and down, up and down, up and down. There's no consistency in how they play. And so I, I get where you're coming from, but, just on the standpoint of they never have the best play on the court. They do, but we don't know which version of them that we're, we're going to get on night in and night out basis. All right, Shams, you heard him. We had a lot of GM input going on right here. Uh, what are you focused on with this Knicks team? Well, I think in the regular season, Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, they, they are good enough to carry this team, at least, you know, right where they are now, which is a bubble home court advantage team, you know, little, literally little outside home court advantage. Last year, they didn't have home court advantage in the 4-5 matchup, and they beat Cleveland a couple, couple years prior to that. They had home court advantage, and then they lose. So they're a team that's right on the cusp of home court advantage to me, which is which is a good place to be in a lot of ways. It's, it's better than where they've been uh, the last decade plus before Tibbs got there. But I think for them, it's Julius Randle uh, and Jalen Brunson. How do their games translate in the playoffs? Last year, Julius Randle deals with an ankle injury. He has surgery in the offseason. And then he starts this year off slow. He shoots only 29% that first month of the season. But listen, the last month and a half, he's up to 50% shooting. He's playing better. And they do have young players, Quentin Grimes, Emmanuel Quickly. If they do want to be active in the trade market, they are a Quentin Grimes away in a trade package to the Utah Jazz from getting Donovan Mitchell. And they end up keeping Quentin Grimes, keeping an extra first round pick. So I could see them being active for sure in the trade marketplace. They're definitely monitoring every star that could be available. Could that be Donovan Mitchell? Uh, are we really here again? We are here again. Okay, it's just everything old is new. Uh, Lakers, by the way, shooting from three, mm, about 32%. Chandler, is that is that a concern? Is that enough shooting? Where are we on their Western Conference Finals chances with that shooting? Yeah, I think last night was a little, you know, exaggerated. Torian Prince had really good looks and went three of 13 last night from three. Usually he's knocking down a way higher clip than that. But look, this is a team last year with that, that, that dumpster fire they threw out there in the beginning of last season was a, not a contender, right? They had zero shooting. It didn't make sense. And then they made moves and we saw how well that ended up for them. And they added some shooting last year. They have that shooting this year, right? They have the Gabe Vincent. They have the D'Angelo Russell. They have Austin Reese. They have guys, Torian Prince. They have guys that can make threes. But this team is comfortable clearly making moves. That we always were, They're always going to be in talks. Are they going to go get a Zach Levine? Are they going to go get a DeMar DeRozan? I'd love to see a Jordan Clarkson come back to L.A. and kind of give them that spark and that's shooting and scoring. Uh, but I think with the success that they had last year, making that huge change in the middle of the season, I, I look for them to do that again, just to continue to add more pieces to build around this LeBron and AD. You got to take advantage of how good they're playing right now. They're, they're, you don't know how long this is going to last. We keep saying that every single year. But yeah, I think Palink is going to be on the move to continue to add more shooting, spacing the floor for these guys to continue what they do. And there's a lot of guys out there that are available. All right, Lou. We got there. We knew the banner was coming. We didn't know what it would look like. And last night was the night. The big unveiling. <laughs> is gonna get, get it out of your system. How are we feeling about uh, this? <laughs> it, I, I like it. It's a mini. Yeah. It, it's it's a smaller mini. than usual. It's a mini. It's smaller than usual. They're laughing. They're taking it in jest. Give them credit. Listen, we accomplished something. This is the first of all time. We don't know how much this this banner is going to be respected. We don't know how much this end season tournament is going to be respected. So until then, celebrate your wins. At the end of the day, you guys got paid handsomely for it. You accomplished yeah. it. You put it together. Celebrate your wins. And so I like the fact that they didn't overdo it, but it's also important to put it on notice that we did do this. So I'm I'm okay with I'm okay with the energy that was surrounded by it. I'm okay with the guys kind of taking it lightly. But at the same time, still honoring yourselves because we did accomplish something for the first time ever. Yeah, Chandler, I agree. You want to say something? I love that it was small. I love that it was a mini, like Lou said. I love that it was a different color. And look, this yeah. this is just this is just a stepping stone 
And is it accomplishment? Sure. They came together and they won something early in the season. Is it the big picture where they want to be? No, but this is something that I think is going to continue to trend upward. I don't think this tournament is going anywhere anytime soon. I think it's going to continue to get bigger and bigger, but yeah, I like how the celebration was quicker. I like how it's a smaller banner. And again, there's a big picture here of contending for, you know, a, a lot, a bigger trophy and an NBA championship. So I don't think you can belittle it and not do anything, but I think what they did last night was appropriate. That's per And by the way, if that thing gets filled up with dates, that's, that's kind of cool. It's like, all right, that's, yeah. that's something. And it was, it was nice. All right. I can't believe I'm yeah. saying that. I must be sick. Uh, Mavs nuggets. That was a game that happened last night. Nuggets. Woo. They blew them out. 130, 104. Jamal Murray with 22. Aaron Gordon with 21. Luca. Obviously, 38, 11, and 8. Kyrie, no Kyrie. Fifth straight game with the heel injury. I'm going to make you pick your favorite kid here, Chandler. Who is more important to his team, Jamal Murray or Aaron Gordon? That's a silly question, Michelle. Uh, well. Um, it's, 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 Jamal, it's Jamal Murray. And I, I could argue Jamal Murray or Jokic, honestly, on any given night. But Jamal Murray is so what? important. What? You see what he does in the postseason when he's healthy. He is another asset that can go and take over a game. Aaron Gordon, as good as he is, he's a role player. He can defend. He can score inside out. Aaron Gordon's not taking over games. Aaron Gordon's not going and getting 40 in the postseason, controlling an offense, playing two-man game with Jokic. Uh, Jamal Murray is is very, very important to this team, and you can see the success when he gets out there and he's efficient and he's healthy and he's got that extra pep in his step. This team goes as far as him. Obviously, Jokic is their everything. He's their MVP. He's probably the best player in the NBA right now. And it goes back to that Bucks team that I always talk about, how good Giannis is. They don't win that year without Chris Middleton. As good as Jokic is, they don't win without Jamal Murray, Jamal Murray being the best version of himself. So Aaron Gordon's great. KCP's great. You know, Porter's great. They're going as far as this guy goes. Did you say on any given day, Jokic or Murray? He's that good. Absolutely. That good. It's not any given day, Jokic or Gordon. Fair, <laughs> yeah. but good Lord. Okay, I know. What are we trying to cause problems? No, we're not trying to do that. Uh, fine. Okay, I'm a little All the bit time, shocked. Michelle. All the time yeah, we're causing I don't, trouble. <laughs> no, I don't want to. Uh, there's a great There's a great piece of video of Jokic and Luka walking in together, just telling jokes, being great. But Luka is averaging uh, under 37 points, nine rebounds, almost 12 assists in 40 minutes over his last eight games. It's a tale as old as time. Is is it too much Luca all the time? Jason Kidd even said he's a little bit concerned about his minutes. At some point, Lou, are we going to stop having this conversation? It seems to be if they don't have Luca out there, there's no shot. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, and <laughs> and and with that and with that being said, Luca is an MVP candidate. He's somebody we ex we have high expectations for. With Kyrie being out. He's going to have to carry 90% of the load for this basketball team in the way that they're built. And so mm. I guarantee you, Luca, he's, he's not practicing. He's not doing anything extra. He's preparing <laughs> for basketball games and he's going out and he's trying to help them win basketball games. And so they're going to have to do that until help is on the way. And so at this point, nothing is too much for Luca. He has to do what's necessary. And this is how he plays. He's a rebounding guard. He's a pass. He's a pass first shoot second guard, even though he averages, you know, upwards of 30 points a game, this is the way that he plays. And so this is just how this team is built. I, I don't know another way that they can win without him doing the things that he's been doing. Um, Chandler, better MVP argument, Jokic or Luka? You can't go wrong either way. I'd probably say Jokic just because they're going to win more games. I think they're going to finish a higher seed and they're going to be more of a contender. But I got to say, watching last night and Luca in that first half, it's unbelievable. He just, he toys with defenses. The shots he takes, let alone makes, are, it's it's really just baffling. Uh, he can do everything on the floor, his step back. He's got the high release for his jump shot. Takes bad shots, but he never gets his shot blocked. Um, he's unbelievable. And they're both they're both such fascinating players, right? Because they're not the strongest. They're not the most athletic, but they are brilliant basketball minds. You can't speed either of them up. They both have size and an unbelievable IQ. The way they see the floor, the way they understand the game. Even just little no lookers they do. It, it really is impressive. It's beautiful to watch. These two, 
these two are going to be great for a really long time. I just got to give the advantage to Jokic right now just because his team is better. We don't know when Kyrie is coming back, and, and Lucas is trying to tread water right now while he's out because he can't continue to do this night in, night out. We go back to last year. Remember how bad we felt for him half the time <laughs> where he's, he's putting up numbers and just, just not much help around him? This is a team that has got to be fully loaded. They have to have all hands on deck to have any sort of chance. But, man, Luca, Luca's special. Special. That's a good word. Uh, T-Wolves. T-Wolves were down huge. They were down 17 to Miami. Came back to win this one. 112-108. Uh, 20-5 and five right now is where they sit. Best start in franchise history through 25 games. Anthony Edwards, 32-8. and eight. Tyler Hero's back. He had 25. Um, he missed 18 games with that sprained right ankle. And then he returns with 25 points. How badly was he missed, Lou? Much needed. They needed a guy that, that can go out and score the basketball and be a wild card for them. Um, you know, even though Jimmy Butler is there, even though Bam is there, Tyler Hero is a natural scorer. He's one of those guys that's going to go out there. He knows his job. He knows what's important for that basketball team. He's going out there and getting a bucket. And so this is very much needed for a Miami Heat team that was right there in the mix of things, but still trying to turn the corner going into the second half of the season. And Tyler Hero is right on time for that. And also, Bam missed nine of his last 12 with the hip contusion. Um, look, this is a Heat team that i it's impossible to predict, Chandler, but I'm going to ask you to do it anyways. If everybody's healthy, what can we expect from them in the East? A scary team, especially for one of these top three teams to play in the first round. You, you, you all know about Jimmy Butler in the postseason. Now they got... Tyler Hero back, who who literally has missed so many games, just throw him in the starting lineup here. Go get twenty five real quick. Uh, they've had a surprising, uh, uh, you know, rise from this rookie Jaime Jaquez from UCLA, who's been, you know, great on both ends of the floor. So this is a dangerous team. When you look at them and the, uh, this is a team that is deep, is tough, is well coached that you don't want to play in the playoffs. And so I, I look for them to kind of float somewhere around that four, five, six. Uh, seed and, and it's going to be a tough out because we so we know how tough they play we know they defend they got bam back who's one of the best defending bigs they got jimmy back who's one of the best defending uh wings they got shooting they can space the floor so this is a dangerous team and this is a team that i tr i trust them more than new york i trust them more than indiana i trust them more than orlando outside that big three this is a team with experience that are a tough tough team to beat four times shams the go bear trade was and probably continues to be one of the most criticized trades. And then we have Rudy Gobert with a very strong start. Is that a coincidence? Yeah, well, Rudy Gobert told me before the season, he was aiming for his fourth Defensive Player of the Year award. So I think he came into this season with, with, a, with a strong mind. He came into the season motivated. And after the year last year, I, th I think he, t he took that hard. And he worked on his body obsessively over the summer. I talked to people around the Timberwolves. They say he's obsessive about his body the intricacies he takes in his day-to-day -day approach and like little things whether whether it be diet whether it be approaches he he's he's very um he, he's very maniacal about it and he spreads that with the, with the rest of his teammates helps the younger players out he went on on a darkness retreat after the season he spent a few days literally uh without his phone in in a cave uh he got his body in the best shape uh, ever and i think that has clearly shown itself he's averaging again over 12 rebounds a game over two blocks a game those are really what his career norms were last year he was under two blocks per game we're not used to seeing that from rudy gobert and and, and now the timberwolves are one of the best defenses in the league that's on par for what this team traded for when they when they got rudy gobert um and so you know for rudy gobert it was a lot of motivation after last season are we missing something with these darkness retreats? Should we be doing this? For them to be for no. them to be twenty and five after twenty five games, lock me up in a cave. That's that's going to be the outcome. <laughs> that's like we're so missing something. <laughs> Quiet with your own thoughts. Sounds like hell. Uh, all right, we're taking yeah, no a quick thanks. break. When we come back, Sean Scoops and Anthony Edwards on Michael Jordan, not the other stuff. Back, yeah. We'll be back. Run it all. Do run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Oh, it's scoops time, Shams. All right, uh, Mac McClung. It's almost like it manifested itself. Is he in or not? 
Well, you come on running back and you see good things happen for you. So <laughs> last week, Mac McClung joined us. And yesterday, sources told me that the NBA formally invited Mac McClung to the Dunk Contest 2024 All-Star Weekend in Indy. Uh, the expectation is he's going to take it. He has not officially taken it yet, but that's the expectation. He's a reigning G League Player of the Month, averaging 25 points a game, six assists a game for Orlando's G League affiliate. And we saw what he did last year, perfect scores, didn't miss a dunk. Uh, throughout his dunk contest experience. So we don't know the rest of the field quite yet, but Mac McClung, the first name to be invited, the first name that you can you can safely assume will will be a part of the mix there. Yeah, I can't I mean, good lord, why would you say no? Is who else to I know we did this last year and it didn't happen, but who would we like to see guys? Chandler, you first. Anyone. The I know Chandler's gonna say the guy that was supposed to last year that pulled out Shaden Sharp. I yep. think he's he's the bounciest He's the bounciest dude. I think he's the one that would give, you know, Mac the most trouble. I think it would be awesome if part of his suspension of the NBA made jog do the dunk contest. <laughs> <laughs> get your get your get your image back. Get the kids back on your side. Get more fans. That would be so cool if, if guys like Ja or Zion or Anthony Edwards did it. Oh. But it, it, the, I feel like that's not going to happen. That's all a pipe dream. So let me let me get Shaden Sharp. All right. I'd like Ooh, to see any? two different. Yeah, I'd like to see two different scenarios. I will. I would like to see Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine back. Since oh. Mac McClung, since Vince Carter, since Jason Richardson, they by far had the most entertaining dunk contest um, that we've seen to date. So I would like to see those two guys give Mac a run for his money. And you know what? What the hell, LeBron? One and done. Go ahead and give us one. You're mm -hmm. already 40 years old. We don't expect you to win. Just entertain us like you did for the in-season tournament. Sign up for the dunk contest so we can just have the archive footage for years to That's come like we do with Michael Jordan and, and everybody else. Just do it. Him winning the dunk contest at 39 years old might be the craziest thing on his resume if he, if he <laughs> were to do that. That would be would that, insane. That would end the argument. Maybe, maybe not. Shams, appreciate you. We'll see you tomorrow bright and early. Thank you, sir. And uh, it's time now for Say What? Stop comparing me to Michael Jordan. He's Michael Jordan. I'm my own basketball player, so whatever I do, I do. But yeah, I'm nowhere near Michael Jordan. No more comparisons. Yeah. Uh, but if that era was today, do you feel like MJ could guard you? Hell no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, what now? Lou? Uh, he said the right things, but even he didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> He's listen, got a lot going on, bro. He's got a lot going on. Yeah, he's a busy listen, man. Listen, <laughs> I'm going to stay away from it. But what I will <laughs> say is we are in a competitive business. This is a competitive sport. He didn't say anything wrong. He should feel like nobody can guard him. But it was a lot of bravado with that. He, know, he knows what he said. That's yeah, you you have to you have to say that, right? If I'm going up against KD or Kobe or LeBron, I'm not just going to say they're going to bust my ass, right? I'm going to think I'm going in there and I'm having a great game. So like like Lou said, though, you could hear just a little bit of joke, a little bit of doubt when he said it, but you, ha you have to say that. What are you going to say? No? Like, oh, he would clamp me? Like, no, no, no competitive human being in the NBA <laughs> is going to ever say that or else you are a whack. Fair enough. All right, fair enough. How about he he had more? Like he's he's been saying a lot. There's uh, more, there's yeah. more going there's, on with there's him. more to that. The man's very busy. <laughs> Chill, um, man. Here he is on LeBron. He's been the best player in the world for a long time. So I think that's the main person I want to cook. Him or KD? Oh, no. These guys are both playing. See, that's the difference. MJ's done and been done for a long time, but LeBron and KD are still out there. Is this a wise move? Yeah, I like it. I, I like it. And this is this is this is his edge. This is his humor. This is I feel like he's always saying funny stuff like this. But yeah, to be the best, you got to you got to beat the best. And those two guys have been at the top of the league for a really, really long time. And Anthony Edwards is this name that's kind of on the rise, um, who's becoming one of the I think he's the best two way player, honestly, in the NBA right now. Um, so yeah, I love his confidence and to be this good and to get this far as he has, you, you have to be confident. So I, I love it. I, I love him. I love everything. Mostly everything about him. <laughs> Fair enough. Lou, Kevin Garnett, Andre Mon. Uh, I actually think the organization 
is afraid to go talk to him and be real. They're afraid of this man. Do you agree with that? No, I, I disagree. KG, KG huh. is from the old school where every once in a while, private conversations are going to get leaked to the media or it's going to be a big deal on Sports Center. We are now living in, in, in a place where the Golden State Warriors have always kept their business tight and in-house. Even when he punched Jordan Poole, it was a big to-do when that, that footage got leaked because they've always done such a great job of dealing with their issues in the house. And so I think there has been a conversation with Draymond. I think there's been several conversations with Draymond. We just haven't been privy to them. And so I, I disagree with KG. For sure, Draymond has been addressed. It's been talked about as a team. It's been talked about as a unit. And we should just move forward. It is an interesting read, though, because sometimes it does feel like maybe they're not talking to him, not harshly enough, but seriously enough because he keeps doing it. But I, I guess this is the time we're going to find out. Um, Chandler, Kevin Durant said that Jalen Brunson would be a, quote, Hall of Fame player by the end of his career the way he's playing. Do you agree? I mean, yeah, he's, he's got to do it for about, you know, eight to ten more years at this level. But he, he's on the right path. And this is a guy who... Man, looking back to with Cuban and Dallas, I don't know how you don't re-sign this guy for fifty-five million dollars or whatever you could have got him for it is outrageous. He he is a perennial all-star. He is a go-to guy. He is the number one, number two option on a very, very good team. Uh, and what's crazy is he's not one of those guys with this crazy potential, right? Not one of these big names. Uh, Villanova, he was great, but he's always just been solid. He is who he is. He's not going to blow you away with athleticism or speed. But he's so solid. He can knock down shots. He plays pick and roll. He does everything you want your point guard to do. So uh, I think he's on the right trajectory. I think he's unbelievable. Um, and I think he's, you know, the only bright spot moving forward on this Knicks roster that's going to be there for a really, really long time. I love that this is happening. All right, Lou. This one's a good one. Trey Young mm -hmm. said on if he didn't get hurt during the 2021 Eastern Conference Finals, quote, I ain't gonna lie. We definitely would have won our first chip. You were on that team. Do you believe that? Cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, I'm I, I'm with Trey, and and oh, the stop. reason. What now? Uh, listen, the the reason being is because we really felt like we couldn't lose at that at that point. We were shooting the ball well, and all you know these things are about is about timing. We felt like we were peaking at the right moment. We were rolling at the right moment. And we had a really good groove and we couldn't miss shots. And so Trey having having that 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 sense of feeling like we could have won a championship, I was right there with him. Shit. I mean, why not? We were in the final four. You know, we were right there in the mix as well as anybody else. One thing that he left out that was that that's important for context, Giannis also missed two games in that series as mm. well as 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 Trey missing some games. And so I felt like that was a series that anybody could have won and could have went on to the uh, to the championship. So him having that feeling, it's not as far it's it's not as outlandish as it sounded. But I, I don't I don't know if we'd have went that far. But we had an opportunity just like everybody else dealing with the circumstances. So uh, I'm on the fence. Chandler, did did any of that convince you? Those words. I mean, sure. Every team, I guess, when you make it that far, every team you think you think you have a chance, right? Like if you're if you're in the semifinals or the finals of the of your conference, yeah, you think you have a chance. But to say with that confidence that you were, <laughs> you didn't, you, like you didn't. So I don't, no, I'm not rolling. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Shane Sharp, here we go. He was asked about the Blazers once they all get healthy. Quote: I think we have something special here. They're six and nineteen. Uh, but it is a trick question, right, Chandler? Like, what are you supposed to say? What? <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. It could be Detroit. It could be. Oh, here we go. That's three. That's three strikes. No, on so hold on. Wait, show. wait, wait. So, so you're rolling with this? No. Can I finish, uh, Lewis? My Can bad. I my finish bad. Finish, Lewis. <laughs> I don't think it's this bright, crazy future like San Antonio. I don't think it's okay, oh, okay, see in a couple of years. But when you look at the pieces, the Scoot Hendersons, the DeAndre Aytons, the the Anthony Simons, they have talent. But as as far as that translating to a good team anytime soon, and no, no, not at I all. I feel but, better about their talent than the set than San Antonio's talent. Oh, uh, what the hell? No. You're, you're you're nuts. As, as, a, as an as an entirety, uh, you didn't even mention Anthony Simons. Like, 
He's. I think that I four think guys Keldon, are going to be better than any four that the San Antonio Spurs got right now. I just. I think Wimbenyama, Vassell, and Kel Johnson are better than anybody on the Trailblazers. No, nah, we gonna have to. This is a. This is another time. This is another segment. Oh we no, could, no, we this is a great this time. Well, we have eighteen minutes left. Let's hear listen, it. I think no, listen, out of out of out of out of the out of the four people on the on the Portland Trail Blazers that we mentioned, and out of the three guys that we've mentioned on the San Antonio Spurs, Anthony Simons is a proven hooper at this point. Everybody else is trying to figure it out. So with that alone, he gives me the edge. Yeah, but with that over Wimbenyama. Victor Wimbanyama. Yeah. I'm taking Victor Wimbanyama. Victor Wimbanyama is four and everything else right now. So I'm no. taking him over anybody in the NBA for the future, let alone any of these Woo! cats on the Trailblazers. Hey, hey, Chandler, I'm going with six and nineteen before I go with four and twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> We're screwed either way if we want wins. But talking <laughs> potential, I mean, potent- I love the kid Vassell, Kelton Johnson. He was on Team USA. He's proven like yeah. not at all. Yeah. yeah. But we just talked about Shaden Sharp. At some mm-hmm. point, Scoot Henderson is going to wake up. Anthony Simons is still the best player on that basketball team. <laughs> hey, they you still, still got have Scoot, very... you still got Scoot as the rookie of the year, or are you flip flop? <laughs> I'm out of there. Nah, 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 nah. I'm out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, at some point, he's going to wake up. But my How do you know year... that? You can't say that. It's a feeling. It's a vibe. So you so you don't have a feeling about the Spurs that at some point that's all going to get better and turn around. But you have it about no. I just I just think there's more pieces in Portland. We didn't so even we'll mention see. Sohan. We didn't even mention Sohan either, who's also going to be really well, good. Well, they him. don't even know what position he is. So why well, should he's not we? a point guard? We know that. <laughs> I'll tell you this: you know, barring a huge trade. Or anything else, the San Antonio Spurs will make the playoffs before the Portland Trailblazers in the near future. Boom. Mark I guarantee it. that. I, 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 t- I take that bet. I take a hundred dollar bet for that. Hey, mark this word. Oh, then, you know what? I want Let's that. I want some too. Because there's no way, Chandler, you're the only one winning this bet. Lou's gonna pay obviously, both of us. obviously, you're with the Spurs. So I'll take a hundred dollar bet with you as well. Yes. You know that's the only way she'll ever agree with me is if I ride the Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> the only time this whole thing works. Uh, Man, that, that was a lot said on that. And I feel like we're going to dissect everything you guys just said on this tomorrow. Well done, guys. Oh, we still have more show? My bad. Uh, we're going to take a break. <laughs> Coming back on our first edition of Who You Got. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back. Oh, yep, 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 yep. New segment called Who You Got. Very, very simple. I'm going to give you two choices, and then you tell us who you got. <laughs> Could not get easier. All right. Pacers or Heat? Lou. Pacers. That's it? You want me to elaborate? Yeah, it would be good for TV, yeah. <laughs> They're a better team. <laughs> Voila. Well, not according to this <laughs> thing that you have down here below your head. Yeah, I just I, I just like the paces. I like the energy surrounded this team. I like that they're turning the page on um, what they've been historically through the, over the past 10 years. And, you know, they have a they have a guy that's clear cut the best player on 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 both teams. And so I like the paces. Hmm. Chandler. I disagree. I think the Heat, I think they have the experience. I think they're one of the better defensive teams comparing to literally the worst defensive team in Indiana. I think Tyrese Halliburton is special, but I think when you look at the makeup of this team with the scoring, the defense, the versatility the Heat has, I think they're a harder out in the playoffs. I think they're a deeper team. I think they're better. All right, fair enough. Chandler, you're up next. I just feel, uh, like, I just feel oh. like Chandler and I, we're just going to debate every single thing today. <laughs> Feels like the, it. What's the what's the only thing that beats good defense, Chandler? Better offense. Better offense, and right now, Indiana's a better offensive team. Defense wins they, championships, Lou. So they say. I I I've yet to see it. <laughs> but so, so they so they say. So they say. <laughs> We're gonna okay. be seeing the Pacers play zone defense in the finals. I don't see it. <laughs> Okay, maybe be, you might they're agree. Gonna be pressing ninety four feet. They're gonna be pressing ninety four feet. Better. To one, three, or one, or, or, or they go. They gonna have to put one forty on the board. And I, I like the <laughs> chances of doing. I like it. that. Yeah, I think that would be fun. I would enjoy that actually as a consumer. You might agree on the next one, maybe. I don't know, Chandler, Tyrese, Maxi, or Jalen Brown. 
This one's tough. I think I initially sent in Tyrese Maxey, but then I went with Jalen Brown. I think he's more oh. versatile. I think he can do more on the floor. I think he gives you a better defensive option, his size. It's weird because they're different positions, right? So, uh, but I, I got to go with Jalen Brown. Tyrese Maxey is, he's just now becoming this, this kind of go-to guy. Jalen Brown's been it for longer. Uh, they're both heck of, you know, hell of, ta- hell of talents, but I like Jalen Brown here. We, we, we agree on this one. Uh, we agree on this one. Jalen Jalen Brown has been has been one B for a number of years now, and he's proven that he's a go to guy. Tyrese Maxey is having a coming out party at this point in his career. Big things to come in the future, but at this present date, it's still going to be Jalen Brown. All right, I, this one's tricky because I I know what Chandler's going to say, Lou, but Luka Doncic or Kevin Durant. Lou, you're first. It's going to be Luka for me. It's going to oh, be Luca, you know. Okay. Wow. Yeah, Kevin Durant has a lot of help. And on the offensive end, he's not as much as a rebounder as Luca is. He's not as much of a passer as Luca is. That team, if you could take Kevin Durant off the court, that team is still going to have an opportunity to win with the depth that they have and, and Devin Booker and whenever Bradley Beal gets back healthy. You take Luca off the floor, this team probably won't win a basketball game. So it's going to be Luca for me. Yeah, can you imagine Luca on that on that Suns team and with that depth and with that help and with that with you know that team? I think listen, I think they're both special. I think Kevin Durant a couple of years ago now it might be a different argument, but right now Luca is huh. younger. He's he's in his prime. Kevin Durant is kind of going out of his prime. Um, they're both you know first Bell Hall of Fame, but you, I'm going Luca. Okay, Luca twice. Um, Paul George or Kawhi Leonard Chandler. See, I think we're going to disagree on this one because Lou said Paul George is the best player on the Clippers earlier, and I full-heartedly yep. disagree. I think Kawhi Leonard is their best player. I think he's the most proven player. I think I saw did he has he played every single game this year? So the fact that yep. he's in that shape, he's healthy. Uh, we haven't seen this version of him since Toronto championship. Like, like he he is he is back. He is healthy. He is strong. He's getting to his spots. We all know how good defensively he is. And I said earlier too, this these are probably the best versatile, you know, offensive and defensive wings in the league. But if I had to pick one, I'm going with Kawhi, especially because he's shown me he can stay healthy this year. Kawhi is not a bad pick. The only reason I feel like Paul George is the best player on that team because he's the most comfortable. You know, no matter who's on the floor, he's going to get 15 to 20 shots a night, no matter what's going on. And a lot of that offense is run is ran through Paul because he's more of the he's out between him and and um damn I forgot his name but <laughs> between him and James Hart they're they're the, the the two natural scorers on that basketball team and so I think Paul George is the best player on that team because he looks the most comfortable Kawhi is still trying to figure out he's still trying to find his spots and even when we have breakdowns you just see Kawhi go to the block put his hand up and he wants a post up. Paul George is still playing through the offense, still coming off a down screen, still doing his thing. And so I, I'm still going PG. We're going to take a quick break. Back, Wrap things up when we come back. John Morant is back tonight after the 25 game suspension. The over under for him, 24 and a half points. What do we expect, Chandler? I mean, normally I'd go over here, but just being the first game back, the jitters, the cardio, the conditioning, I I probably will go under, assuming there's some sort of restriction of some sort. Lou? Under, without a doubt. (laughs) Fair enough. We'll see you guys tomorrow. The running back. Run it up. The running back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up.